All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. Now, uh, tonight's discussion is centered on general education. But of course, before we start with anything, let's all have our opening prayer. So, samahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. Now, once again, this is general education. Please do not forget to like, love, share our video, start a watch party if you can. Please do send us your stars on Facebook, Super Chat, Super Stickers naman po sa YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po to all our supporters, to all our star senders, Super Chatters, Super Sticker Senders. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, again, please do like, love, share our video. We will start in a few minutes. Pakilike na po at love ng ating video. Maraming salamat, Sir Brajam. Gonzalez Barrias for sending us stars. Thank you po. Again, please do like, love, share our video. Very important so that we can reach out to more people. We start with question number one. Number one. Two of his best known works are Pieta and David. Or Pieta and David. Is it letter A, Michelangelo? Letter B, Donatello? Letter C, Raphael? Or letter D, Da Vinci? Okay, what's your choice for question number one? See, si Facebook user, nagpapa shout out no? Newbie from province of the Nagat Islands. Pero hindi ko po makita yung inyong name. So the next time that we have our live stream, you need to log into your, or mag-register po sa StreamYard para po nakikita ko yung inyong names. Okay, I see letter A's in our chat box. Again, please do like, love, and share na po ng ating video. Maraming salamat po. Mabibiyayaan lahat ng mga nagsishare na nag-start ng ating watch party. Of course, if you can, send us stars, send us super chat, super stickers. Maraming salamat po. Okay, I see letter A's sa ating question number one. All right, going back to question number one. Two of his best-known works are Pieta and David. Is it letter A, Michelangelo? Letter B, Donatello? Letter C, Raphael? Or letter D, Da Vinci? Okay, so letters A, B, C nyo po. I know ito ay names din ng ating mga Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, no? but bago sila ginamit sa ating uh, Ninja Turtles, sila din po ay names ng famous Italian artists. Na? Si Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, isa pa si Leonardo. No? And of course, choice din naman si Da Vinci, also very famous. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Cheng Hofdal. Ganon din po kay Ma'am, hindi ko nakikita si Ma'am, April and Canada. Maraming maraming salamat po for your super stickers. Okay. So again, going back to this question, sino ba yung ating hinahanap? And the correct choice, of course, here is letter A. No? So tumpak karamihan sa inyo, that would be letter A, Michelangelo. Let's take a look at our discussion. Okay, so these are two of the most famous works of Michelangelo, David. Heroic in form and stature at 14 feet and 3 inches tall, hindi pa included yung base, presides over the Galleria dell'Accademia in Florence in Italy. It signifies the Florentine or Florentine Republic's freedom from the Medici rule. Okay, so napaka manly ng David, no medyo censored. All right, now this one is Pieta. The Pieta was commissioned for the French Cardinal Jean de Belgiris, who was a French ambassador in Rome. The sculpture in Carrara marble was made for the Cardinal's funeral monument but was moved to its current location at St. Peter's Basilica. It is the only piece Michelangelo ever signed. Okay, so lumalabas po ito sa let. Anong only piece that Michelangelo ever signed? Your answer would be the Pieta. And of course, David was also one of his best works. Okay, so Dave, uh, si Michelangelo po yung ating hinahanap, letter A. Now, what about the rest of our choices? Donatello, he also had his uh, sculpture that was also titled or named David, no? 
But it's very different from the David of Michelangelo. Nakikita niyo naman yung David ni Michelangelo. Very manly. May lumalabas pa, no? may nakalabas pa. Um, nakalantad lahat. Pero yung kay Donatello naman, um, medyo pa-girl, no? Yung kanyang, although meron din nakalabas, medyo censored din, ay medyo pa-girl. May mga hat siya, may mga flowers, okay? And so on. Now, Donatello's bronze David, now in Bargello Museum, is his most famous work and the first known freestanding nude statue produced since antiquity. Some have perceived the David as having homoerotic qualities and have argued that this reflected the artist's own orientation. Si Donatello kasi ay medyo pa girl. Okay, so yung kanyang sculpture, of course, also reflected his personality. Medyo pa girl din yung kanyang David. Uh, now, this was the work of Raphael. He was an Italian painter and architect of high renaissance. His work is admired for its clarity of form, ease of composition, and visual achievement of the Neoplatonic ideal of human grandeur. Together with Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, he forms the holy trinity of the high renaissance. So, pinaka sikat no pinaka banto kung meron tayong triumvirate na si Rizal, si Del Pilar, at si... Um, Plaridel, no? as Plaridel play si Del Pilar, uh, si Lopez Haina, meron din silang Holy Trinity, meron din silang kayong Verate of the High Renaissance. So you have Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Hindi nila sinama si pag-girl na Donatello. And this was Raphael's work. Is uh, this is called it's called um, this is called the School of Athens. And dito depicted yung mga uh, Greek philosophers natin yung John si Plato, yung si Aristotle, and all other Greek, uh, very famous Greek people. Okay, so that's the School of Athens by Raphael, naman. And of course, Leonardo da Vinci is also very famous. He is identified as one of the greatest painters in the history of art and is often credited as the founder of the high renaissance the mona lisa is his best known work and often regarded as the world's most famous painting lumalabas po ito sa left no si mona lisa the last supper is the most reproduced religious painting of all time and his vitruvian man drawing is also regarded as a cultural icon okay so this one Vitruvian man, nakikita nyo ito sa medicine, no? na, nakikita siya lagi. And of course, ito namang Last Supper, maraming kitchens na merong Last Supper. No? So it is the most reproduced religious painting of all time. Okay, so this is Da Vinci. But of course, we were looking for letter A, Michelangelo. Okay, so congratulations po sa mga tumpak, sa mga ligwak, at least sa actual let. Alam nyo na kung ano yung magiging sagot. We move on with question number two. The following are national artists for theater, except letter A, Rolando Tino, letter B, Severino Montano, letter C, Ramon Valera, or letter D, Wilfrido Maria Guerrero. Who is your choice for number two? Mamuela Tats Lantapon. Maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Mm hmm Si Ma'am Rachel Grace Cortez Makatisbes, basahin ko lamang yung kanyang comment. Hello Ma'am Mac, I'm your silent reader and follower ng Gurong Pinoy. Maraming maraming salamat po sa free let videos sa YouTube. After three takes let, passer na po ako. June let 2022. God bless sa inyo. Maraming salamat and of course congratulations. Ganap na siyang LPT. No? So kayo na po yung susunod, yung mga nanonood sa ating ngayon. But please do not forget to of course like, love, and share our video para po tayo ay mabiyayaan. Ma'am Gigi Fabre, Nakaituna di Madukot. Hello po. From Kibawe, Bukidnon. Bukidnon ba? Nakakat po yung inyong uh, comment. Ma'am Phoebe, Phoebe Soriano, maraming salamat po for the stars. Okay, letter C. I see a lot of letter C sa ating question number two. The following are national artists for theater, except, okay, sino kaya ang tumpak na choice? Okay, but before that, let me just read this. No, Facebook user, hindi ko po nakikita yung inyong name. Uh, hi, Ma'am Mac, Team Peshe po ako, LPT na po ako, June, hashtag June. Isa po kayo sa rason kung bakit ako nakapasa sa let, the best po ang Gurong Pinoy. Hindi po kayo magsisi na nag-enroll at nanood po kayo sa kanila. Congratulations and of course, maraming salamat for your positive feedback. Sir Rog Calma, thank you for sending us stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Charmy. Alentijo, Barcelo. Maraming salamat po. Okay, for number two, 
the exception here is letter C. That's Ramon Valero. No? So marami, marami sa inyo tumpak din. Okay, so this right here is a picture of Sir Ramon Valera. Not Valero, but Valera. Uh, he's also called Ramuning. Okay, so medyo pa girl din siya. Valera is known to the public as the high priest of local fashion. He transformed the traditional Maria Clara outfit into a wedding gown with bell sleeves, which at first was considered a disgrace to the Filipino standards. So siya yung pauso na uh, yung, yung bell sleeves ng ating Maria Clara. His clients included Manila's then socialites like Susan Magalona, Gloria Romero, Baby Araneta Flor, and the Philippines' first ladies from Aurora Quezon to Imelda Marcos. He was proclaimed National Artist for Fashion Design by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo in 2006. Okay, so hindi po siya National Artist for Theater. He was a National Art Artist for Fashion Design. Now, the rest of your choices, of course, are all National Artists for uh, theater. Rolando Tino was known for translating Western classics, which includes the works of Sophocles, Shakespeare, Ibsen, Chekhov, Puccini, and Verdi into Tagalog. He did these translations in order to advance the Filipino language. He was a prolific poet and writer who helped establish uh, the Filipino language drama in the 1970s. He was made a national artist of the Philippines for theater and literature in 1997. Now, si Severino Montano naman organized the Arena Theater. Lumalabas po ito si Severino Montano, uh, the one who organized the Arena Theater as Dean of Instruction of the Philippine Normal College to bring drama to the masses. He used his own money, about 8,000 pesos, to start the Arena Theater, a theater in the round. Due to the PNC being unable to fund the theater, Montano volunteered his services to plan for a self-financing national drama program that would serve the grassroots, the barrios of the Philippines. So, so nag-reach out siya, nagkaroon siya ng arena theater, the, the theater, para siya mobile theater din. Okay, now this here is Wilfrido Maria Guerrero organized and direct, directed the UP mobile theater naman siya, which traveled around the Philippines to give performances. The UP mobile theater received two awards when he was director. Uh, the Citizens Council for Mass Media Trophy, Trophy in 1966 and the Balagtas Award in 1969-1997. Guerrero was posthumously distinguished as a national artist for Philippine theater. Okay, so lahat sila ay theater. But of course, we were looking for Ramuning, no? Ramuning Val uh, Valero. Okay, we go to number three. What does the Pascal or PA measure? Is it letter A, velocity, letter B, mass, letter C, pressure, or letter D, temperature? Yung anak ko sumasagot din, no? Mm -hmm. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Leia Sabra, for sending us a super sticker dyan naman po sa YouTube. Thank you so much po. Okay, who is your choice or what is your choice? I mean, for number three, Ma'am Jean Villarmia Seniza Galico. Maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Ganun din kay Ma'am Nicole Aquino. Sir Dari Laybag, maraming salamat. Ma'am Lainiel, si Olmo, shout out po sa lahat ng ating mga star senders. Thank you so much. Okay, I see a lot of letter C is pressure for number three. And of course, letter C ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, so the Pascal is a measure for pressure, for air pressure. This unit was named after Blaise Pascal, noted for his contributions to hydrodynamics and hydrostatics. And experiments with a barometer. Remember, but your barometer is a weather tool that measures air pressure. The name Pascal was adopted for the SI unit Newton per square meter by the 14th General Conference on Weights and Measures in 1971. Okay, so Pascal measures pressure. Letter C, ang ating tumpak na choice. Not velocity, not mass, not temperature. We go to number four. In which layer of the atmosphere can you find the ozone layer? Letter A, troposphere. Letter B, mesosphere. Letter C, stratosphere. Or letter D, exosphere. What is your choice for number four? Ma'am Febi Soriano, maraming salamat again for sending us stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am 
Larry Me Conception the Second, Mam Yunita Kanke La Pasaran, Marami Salamat po. Sir Fitzgerald Barrairo, Marami Salamat. Watching from Aya, Talisay Batangas. Thank you po. Ganon din kay Ma'am Diana Boebo Bocalig Il or the second. Ma'am Nicole Aquino, maraming salamat po for being one of our star senders. Again, maraming maraming salamat po to all our star senders and super chatters. Thank you so much. Okay, again, please don't forget to like, love, and share our video. Thank you so much for sharing our video so that we can reach out to more people. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's sa ating comment box. We are talking about the different layers of the atmosphere. Okay, now you all know that the atmosphere is that uh, very thin layer of gas that protects the earth from the harmful rays of the sun. No? And of course, one very important part of that is the ozone layer. Ozone has the chemical formula of O3, so three atoms of oxygen, you know, ozone. Okay, now in which specific part or in which specific layer of the atmosphere can you find the ozone layer? I see a lot of letter C's and letter C is tumpak. Now that's the stratosphere. Let's take a look at our explanation. Now, so here you see the different layers of the atmosphere of the earth starting from the lowest, which is a troposphere. Now, now a very common question in the let is about weather disturbances. Lahat ng klase ng weather, yung typhoon, hurricane, yung inyong uh, storms, this would all be found in the troposphere. No? So the lowest layer, the layer which is nearest the, the surface of the earth, and it is where all weather disturbances would happen. Stratosphere, sabi natin kanina, this is where you can find the ozone layer. No? So that's a stratosphere. The next layer, the middlemost, is mesosphere. This is known to be the coldest layer of the atmosphere. Now that's your mesosphere. Thermosphere is the next layer, the hottest. And in thermosphere, you find a very special layer which you call your ionosphere. No, ionosphere po yung ating um, thermosphere ay merong ionosphere. And of course, your ionosphere is the reason why you see the dancing lights or the northern lights, your aurora borealis, uh, northern hemisphere. Now, that can be found in your ionosphere, which is also part of your thermosphere. Also, very common question in the let is, in which layer or what layer of your atmosphere bounces uh, the radio signals back to the Earth, no? allows you to listen to the different radio uh, signals, radio frequencies? Your answer would also be ionosphere, which is also part, again, of your thermosphere. And of course, you have the exosphere. By exo, we mean this is the outermost layer, okay? Outermost layer na po siya. But we were looking for letter C for number four. Congratulations again. Medyo maraming tumpak, no? Medyo uh, familiar na sa inyo yung ating mga tanong. Very good. We go to number five. A body at rest will remain at rest and the body in motion will remain in uniform motion along a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. This is stated by letter A, law of acceleration, letter B, law of amalgamation, letter C, law of interaction, or letter D, law of inertia. Okay, what's your choice? Number five. Ano po yung ating tumpak na choice for question number five? Thank you, Ma'am Inaj Lehman, for sending us stars. Thank you so much, Bob. Ma'am Margie Amosco, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Nanonood habang nagpapakain ng anak, Ma'am Shanlexi Maharalim. No? Hello po sa lahat ng ating mga moms, katulad ko, sa lahat ng mga, may mga side gigs ng mga online sellers, sa lahat ng ating mga small negosyante, uh, nag online review sa atin, of course, habang nagtatrabaho, habang nagpapakain ng anak, habang nag-aalaga nag ng family, maraming maraming salamat po for tuning in. Sir Nel Santiago, maraming salamat for the kind comment. Good evening, Ma'am Mek. I'm very thankful na discover ko tong channel na to. Marami po akong natutunan kung paano atakihin ang question, especially sa Prof. Ed. Na why kaming kukuha ng let sa September, papasa kami, first taker po. God bless po sa Gurung Pinoy. Sigurado pong papasa. Okay, what's your choice? I see a lot of letter Ds for question number five. 
And of course, letter D ang tumpak na choice. Now, so sabi ng letter D mo, a body at rest will remain at rest. Kung hindi siya minumove, it will remain at rest. So kung yung isang bagay hindi mawawala, sabi ng aking lolang ulyanin, ang isang bagay po ay hindi mawawala kung walang kukuha, no? kasi hindi siya maglalakad. Yan yung sabi ng inertia mo. A body at rest will remain at rest. If it's resting, it will just continue to be at that position, not moving at all, unless there is an external force, unless na itulak mo siya or um, ipush mo siya or ipull mo siya. And a body in motion will remain in uniform motion unless there is an external force that acts upon it. Okay? So that's the law of inertia. Now, um, common questions in the let's law of inertia. No, bakit tayo nag-wear ng seat belt? That's because of the law of inertia. Pag ikaw ay nasa loob ng sasakyan, and your you, the car is moving and your body is also moving along with the car when the driver um presses the brake your body has inertia and so tendency ng inyong katawan is to continue moving kaya ka nagmo-move forward no kapag ka nag-brake yung inyong driver and so very important that you are wearing your seat belt so that you can avoid any unforeseen circumstances any accidents if your uh, you you are inside a car a stopped car not moving car and the driver suddenly starts the car and uh, the car starts moving your body naman would be pushed backward because your body wants to be at rest no that still is the law of inertia so law of inertia pa rin po yan your law of acceleration ang law of inertia mo that's the first law of motion a law of acceleration mo is the second law ito po yung mga uh, law of motion according to laws of motion according to newton no? isaac newton never been kissed never been touched died a virgin. No? Yan yung sabi nila si Sir Isaac Newton. He gave us the three laws of motion and of course the law of inertia here, that's his first law of motion. Law of acceleration that's his second law of motion. Sabi naman ng law of acceleration mo, force equals mass times acceleration. So F here is force and it is equal to mass and acceleration. Uh, mass times acceleration. That means if you want to, if if the mass is higher, mas malaki yung isang bagay, dapat eh, mas malaki din yung pwersa ang kailangan mo to move it. And of course, kapag ka, uh, acceleration niya, gusto yung mas matulin yung kanyang takbo, mas malaki din dapat yung force na iyong i-exert. No? Ayan yung sabi ng uh, law of acceleration mo, force equals mass times acceleration. Now, law of amalgamation, this is already part of your business. No? This is a combination of one or more companies into a new entity. Uh, in other words, this is also called a merger of companies. So it's the law of amalgamation. Law of interaction, this is the third law of motion, still by Isaac Newton. This is also called the law of action-reaction. Sabi dito sa law of interaction or law of action-reaction, uh, whenever you apply a force on a certain body, that body also applies an equal amount of force. So equal amount of force then yung ina-apply ng body, but opposite in direction. Kaya kung inyong napapansin si Senator Manny Pacquiao, no, kapag siya ay nagboboxing, if he applies 100 newtons, for example, sa face ng kanyang kalaban, ang face ng kanyang kalaban ay nag-a-apply din ng 100 newtons na na force sa kanyang kamao. No? So, equal amount of force, pero opposite yung direction. So, if he is hitting the, the body this way, or the face this way, the face is hitting his fist also the opposite direction. So yan yung sabi ng law of action reaction. For every action, for every force, there is going to be an opposite reaction. Now, this equal amount of force but opposite in direction. Yan yung sabi ng law of interaction mo. Law of action reaction, the third law of motion. But again, we were looking for the law of inertia by Isaac Newton. Okay, we go to number six. A triangle has a perimeter of 50. If two of its sides are equal and the third side is five more than the equal sides, what is the length of the third side? Letter A, 50, and letter B, 25, letter C, 20, or letter D, 10. What is your choice, number six? Okay, what's your choice for question number six? Okay, basahin ko lang ito. Facebook user, Madam Mecca, good evening po, Madam. Ma'am, nindot kaayok ka mo. Lecture, ma'am. 
sa Imu Harako, nakaabot, hindi ko alam masyado i-pronounce, no? It's Cebuano. Sa mga isms of education, halos perfect po, ma'am. Hopefully, makapasa kami sa LET sa September 25, 2022. Again, siguradong papasa. Basta tayo ay magsipag, no? Balikan po lahat ng ating videos. And of course, uh, Pag-pursige, no, pag-aralan mabuti, mag-aral mabuti, less muna yung time sa date, less muna yung time sa uh, teleserye or k-drama, k k-pop. Um, balikan po lahat ng ating mga videos, especially sa YouTube channel Mag-Movie Marathon po. Siguradong papasa. Maraming salamat, Sir Ralph Santiago on YouTube for sending us your super sticker. Thank you po. Okay, what's your choice? Oh, sabi ni Sir Jong Antonio, 1.6 agurong Pinoy ang viewers pero sa Team Pichay, 588 lang. Pamember na kayo para di maputol ang video nyo mamaya. Tama po. Okay, so again, I encourage all of you magpamember po kayo sa Team Pichay. Ma'am May Jean Ancheta Ordonez, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Ma'am Sir Beth Lucencio, nanonood while nagpapa-breastfeed. No? So hindi kailangang iwanan yung anak sa ating online review. Pwedeng-pwedeng alagaan yung baby habang nagre-review. Ma'am Charmy Alentijo Barcelo, again, thank you po for sending us stars. Ma'am Brusel Ann Barde, ganun din, nanonood habang nag-aalaga sa anak. Okay, so sa lahat ng ating mga nanay, hello po. Sa mga tatay, ganun din po. Sir Dolly Gray or Doll Gray, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Ma'am Susana Diola Isla, thank you po for the stars. Ma'am Nicole Aquino, again maraming salamat for the stars. Ganun din kay Sir Abel Villarreal, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Joyce Nava Alarilla, yes meron po tayong for majorship. Mamaya po tingnan niyo ulit sa uh, beginning ng ating video, meron po akong binanggit doon. Okay, number six. A triangle has a perimeter of 50. If two of its sides are equal and the third side is five more than the equal sides, what is the length of the third side? Letter A, 15. Letter B, 25. Letter C, 20. Or letter D, 10. Let's take a look at our explanation. Now, sabi niya, uh, the perimeter is 50. Now, you all know the perimeter is just the sum of all sides. So, when you measure all the sides of your triangle, the three sides, the sum would be equal to 50. Two of its sides are equal and the third side is five more than the equal sides. So if you have the perimeter as 50, your two sides are equal. So we write this as 2s and the third side is five more than the equal side. So your third side here is represented by s plus five, no? five more than the equal side. So 50 is equal to 2s plus s plus 5. Okay, so again, your S plus 5 here would represent the third side, which is 5 more than the two equal sides here represented by your 2S. Okay, so now we are going to get the value of S. No? So kailangan natin malaman ano ba yung value ng S. So we are going to isolate your, your variables muna. So lilipat natin itong plus 5 or positive 5. We need to... Um, to minus or to subtract 5 at both sides. And so you have, uh, combine muna pula, pala natin to, kinombine muna natin yung 2s plus s, that will be equal to 3s. So 3s plus 5. And then we subtract 5 at both sides of your equation. And so we have 50 minus 5 equals 3s. Okay, so 3s na lamang natira dahil we subtracted minus 5 here. No? We, we subtracted 5 here. So plus 5 minus 5, that will be equal to 0. Now 50 minus 5, of course, that would give us 45 equals 3s. And so to get the value of s, we divide both sides by 3. We have 45 divided by 3 equals s. And so the value of s is 15. No? So 15 po yung value of s. Pero yung hinahanap natin is the length of the third side. Ayan. Okay? The length of the third side. What is the length of the third side? And sabi dito, the third side is 5 more than the equal sides. Remember, your third side was represented by S plus 5. No? S plus 5. And so if S equals 15, to get the value of the third side, that would be S plus 5 or 15 plus 5, hence your choice should be letter C, 
20. Okay, so letter C, 20 po yung ating hinahanap. Again, basahin mabuti yung inyong question. Sometimes alam nyo kung paano isolve, pero nagiging mali yung inyong choice because hindi binasa masyado yung question, nagmadali, no? So, hindi nakita third side po yung ating hinahanap, which is 5 more than the equal sides. So, if your third side is S plus 5, S being 15, your answer would be 20, okay? So, letter C, 20, ang tumpak na choice. Okay lang po, pagligwak na move on kaagad. Katulad sa pag-ibig, kapag ka nabigo, move on kaagad, no? And uh, um, basta bawi tayo sa actual letter. We go to number 7. The area of a rectangle is 64. If its length is 16, what is its perimeter? Letter A, 48. Letter B, 20. Letter C, 40. Or letter D, 8. Again, if you'd want to become a member of Team Piaché, pwede, pwede pa rin pong humabol. Pwede nyo pong makita lahat ng full-length videos natin doon kahit yung since last year pa nung tayo nagsimula. And of course, uh, lahat po ng files natin nandun. Okay, number seven, what's your choice? This is still your favorite, math. Ma'am Larry, may conception the second. Team Bruner ka po pala, ma'am. Wala pa po tayong link kasi sa Team Bruner, no? So, uh, ngayon po, you are still watching on our Facebook page. So, napuputol po na yung ating video dyan sa ating Facebook page. Ganun din po sa ating YouTube channel. So, yung iba po, yung mga members ng Team Piaché, uh, na hindi pa magti-take this September, ay nagpapamember po sila ulit for Team Bruner. And of course, we we have our discounts for those team members. Ma'am Faisalia Pangandaman, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Assalamualaikum po to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. And of course, good evening din sa ating mga Christian brothers and sisters. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's. Ma'am Lizelle, Sumalbag Kaliboso Esteban. That means po, uh, you are watching sa ating pong Facebook page. So doon ka po sa Team Piaché, ma manood ma'am, para hindi po putol. I-search mo po Team Piaché and of course, if you are a member, you would be able to see the contents of the group. Doon ka po manood ma'am. Nanonood habang nagpapatulog ng mga anak. Hello from Pangasinan, Ma'am Elizabeth Jimenez Custodio. Hello po. Good evening. Again, hello sa lahat ng ating mga nanay, tatay, titos, titas. Hello po. May lolos, lolas na rin. Okay. Now, the area of a rectangle is 64. If its length is 16, what is its perimeter? So, we are given the area and the length, but we are asked for the perimeter. Now, remember, your area's uh, formula is length times width, no? Now, we are given the area of 64, the length of 16. And so, we can easily solve for the value of our width, no? So, 64 equals 16 times the width. For us to get the value of the width, of course, we need to divide 64 by 16. Uh, 64 divided by 16, that would be equal to our width. And so, width here would be 4, okay? So, width is 4. Now, we are asked for the perimeter. Now, remember the perimeter of your um, triangle or rectangle in this case here. The perimeter is 2 times length times a quantity length plus width, okay? So, 2 times a quantity length plus width. So, your perimeter would be equal to 2 times a quantity, 16. That's your length. It was given. And width, of course, is 4 from our solution here. No? So, 4 na siya. And so, your perimeter would be 2 times 20, okay? 16 plus 4 is 20, 2 times 20. And hence, your correct choice is letter C, that's 40, okay? So, letter C, 40, ang tumpak na choice for number 7, okay? Now, we go to question number 8. Which of the following is an application of thermodynamic property of change in volume of matter in response to a change in temperature? Letter A, putting steel utensils in a pot cooking food. Letter B, inflating of a rubber balloon. Letter C, placing small gaps in concrete, uh, in concrete or steel in railroad tracks and bridges. Letter D, handling hot uh, kitchenware with thick cloth. 
Again, papaano po magpa-member? Just send a message sa ating po Facebook page kung saan po kayo nanonood ngayon. Kapag ko um, nag-send po kayo ng message no at hindi pa po kayo na-replyan, minsan po kasi out of office hours, of course, nagpapahinga din po yung ating admin, babalikan po kayo tomorrow. Ganon din po sa mga nakapag-join na, pero hindi pa na-add, hindi pa na-replyan, hintay nyo lamang po. No? So, uh, please bear with us. Of course, babalikan po namin kayo. Okay, number eight. So again, for number eight, the question is, saan dito yung application ng thermodynamic property of change in volume? That means lumalaki yung space na ino-occupy ng isang matter in response to a change in temperature. No? Lumalawak, uh, mas lumalaki. There is an increase in size whenever you increase heat, no? you, you increase temperature. And ang tupak na choice natin dito would be letter C, placing small gaps in concrete or steel in railroad tracks and bridges. Ito yung tinatawag nating mga uh, junction gaps, no? junction, ga junction gaps yung tinatawag natin dito. So meron po tayong mga steel between sa ating railroad or may mga cracks sa ating road na hindi, kung inyong napapansin, hindi dire-diretso, is hindi isang isang uh, concrete slab lang yung, yung nilalagay sa ating kalsada, merong gaps. This is to um, occupy or this is to accommodate yung sinasabi ng change in volume. Kasi pag umiinit, ay nag-e-expand yung ating simento, nag-e-expand po yung ating asphalt and so kailangan eh merong gaps between our roads, between our uh, our bridges no para po hindi siya madaling masira, hindi madaling masira yung roads mo. So letter C ang tumpak na choice for this item, okay? So importante po alam na natin kung ano yung sagot para sa actual let ay hindi na tayo magkamali. We go to number nine. What is the probability of getting a total of 11 when a pair of dice is tossed? Letter A, 1, 6. Letter B, 4, 18. Letter C, 1, 18. Or letter D, 7, 18. Okay, ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for number nine? Ma'am Aika Bukog, maraming salamat for, for, for sending us stars. Ma'am Ashley Batayan, yes po, pwede pa pong balikan later. No, hindi naman nawawala yung ating video sa ating Facebook page at sa ating YouTube channel. But of course, uh, yung full-length video natin ay nandun po sa Team Piaché. <laughs> Ma'am Cyril Pongo, sabi ni Ma'am Cyril Pongo, palakasan na lang talaga ng Guardian Angel sa Gen Ed, Gen Ed Math. Ma'am Leia Joanna, thank you for sending us stars. Ayon, sabi ni Ma'am Rona Hido. Matter that gets hotter gets bigger. Okay, so tama yan, no? Kapag pinapainit ay lumalaki. Okay, what is your choice? Number nine. What is the probability of getting a total of 11 when a pair of dice is tossed? Now, remember sa inyong probability, no, it's very important that you know your denominator, kung paano nyo isusolve, no, yung ano yung inyong denominator. If you have a pair of dice, yung inyo pong magiging denominator will be 36, no, because each die has six spaces. Okay, so 6 times 6, um, 36. And if you only have a die, pag uh, isang die lamang po, we don't say isang dice, no? isang die lamang, your denominator would be 6, okay? Because it only has 6 faces. Pag, um, if you are talking about a deck of cards, no? Deck of cards naman, 52. So 52 naman yung inyong magiging denominator. So dito nagkakatalo, no? Dito may advantage yung mga sugarol, yung mga marunong sa tong. It's alam na alam kung ilan yung deck of cards. Okay, so in this case here, our denominator would be 36, no? Because we are talking about a pair of dice. And we are asked for the probability of getting a total of 11. Get, getting a total of 11. Now, if you have a pair of dice, so, um, okay, and na yung sagot, no? 1 over 18. Tingnan muna natin kung paano ito is sinolve. If you have a pair of dice, each die would have 6 faces. So, yung isang die mo, may 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ganon din yung second die mo. And so, when can you get a total of 11? If the first die would have 5 and the second die would, would show 6, 
Now, another probability, that's one probability, no? Another probability is when the first die shows six and the second die shows five. That's the second probability. And so, meron lamang dalawang probability out of 36 possibilities, no? So, two out of 36. Again, sa natin pinuwiang 36, this is because we are given a pair of dice. Again, I've mentioned, pag isang die lamang, it would be uh, 6 no? divided by 6. Pero pag pair of dice po, 36 yung inyong magiging denominator. Okay? So 2 out of 36 or 1 over 18. No? This is already the, the simplest term or simplest form. No? So 2 divided by 2. Uh, their GCF is 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 36 divided by 2 is 18. Okay, so letter C, 1 over 18, ang ating tumpak na choice. We move on with question number 10. Ed and Lori went shopping. Ed spends 30 pesos more than Lori in the first store, and Lori spends 12 pesos less than Ed in the second store. Which of the following must be true about Lori's total spending in the first two stores compared to Ed's? Letter A, Lori spent two-fifths of what Ed spent. Letter B, Lori spent 21 pesos less than Ed. Letter C, Lori spent 18 pesos less than Ed. Or letter D, Lori spent 42 pesos less than Ed. What's your choice for number 10? Um, um, Brie, AB, Brie App, uh, mag-send lamang po ng message sa ating Facebook page, no? Um, para po maging members sa ating Team Piaché or Team Bruner. Okay, what's your choice? I see a lot of letter C's. Tumpa kaya ang letter C. Number 10, I see C's. Okay, number 10, I see letter C. Um, Sir Brajam, Braham Gonzalez Barrias, this is not recorded. We are live. But of course, if you are asking, if you can still go back and watch the video, po pwede po. Okay, so makikita nyo pa rin po ito sa ating uh, YouTube channel or ating Facebook page. But again, the full-length video is on Team Piaché. Ma'am RC, thank you for sending us stars. Ma'am Cheryl Buagas, maraming salamat for sending us stars. Okay, now let's take a look at your explanation. Tingnan natin yung explanation. Ed and Lori went shopping. Ed spends 30 pesos more than Lori in the first store. Okay, so sa first store, ang uh, spending ni Ed was Lori plus 30 because he spent 30 pesos more, no? So 30 pesos more yung spending ni Ed. So Lori spending plus 30. This is the expenditure of Ed sa first store. And Lori spends 12 less than Ed in the second store, no? So mas marami pa rin, mas malaki pa rin yung spinend ni, ni Ed sa second store by 12 pesos because Lori spends 12 less. And so, plus 12 pa rin yung uh, expenditure ni, ni Ed, no? So at the second store... The expenditure of Ed is L plus 12. The expenditure of Lori, kung um, magkano ginastos ni Lori, plus 12. Kasi sabi Lori spends 12 less. And so that means Ed spent 12 more, 12 pesos more. And so kabuuan, Lori spent 42 pesos less than Ed. No? Mas malaki yung gastos ni Ed by 30 pesos sa first store and by 12 pesos sa second store. And total, 42 pesos mas malaki yung expenditure ni Ed kesa kay Lori. No? So Lori spent 42 pesos less than Ed. And so ang tumpak na choice dito would be letter D. Lori spent 42 pesos less than Ed. Okay, so less po, gastador talaga si Ed. Alright, so letter D, Lori spent 42 pesos less than Ed, yung ating hinahanap. Okay, we go to number 11. 
Number 11, which two angles are complementary? Letter A, 22 degrees and 78 degrees. Letter B, 67 degrees and 23 degrees. Letter C, 56 degrees and 24 degrees. Or letter D, 140 degrees and 40 degrees. Okay, what is our choice for question number 11? Number 11 po, what is our choice for question number 11? Mm -hmm. Number 11, what is our choice? Number 11, I see a lot of letter Bs. Letter B kaya, ang tumpak na choice. Mm -hmm. What is our choice? Okay, 11 ICBs. <laughs> Sabi ni Ma'am Lori Libautista Pulmano, hala si Lori at Ed, hindi ko alam yung solution. Facebook user ito, meron siyang question. Hello po, Ma Mex. Ask ko lang po if yung mga choices niyo po ba sa live ay nagka-interchange -inter na po ba? Nag-take note kasi ako sa mga sagot ko kanina, parang mali yung akin lahat. No, Nag-change -nag po, no? nagra-random po yung ating items, nagra-random din po yung ating choices. So kung nag-choose uh, nag kayo kanina ng letter B, tsaka letter B din yung chinoose nyo dito, uh, pag mali siya, no? parang, uh, uh, I mean, uh, akala nyo letter B yung inyong sinagot pero iba yung choice ng letter B dahil po random yung ating items at random din po yung ating choices sa quizzes. Okay, so random po siya. So hindi po siya parehas na order, hindi din po siya parehas na order ng choices. Okay, number 11, ang tumpak na choice, of course, is letter B. No? So, marami kayong tumpak. Now, whenever you say complementary angles, this would be two adjacent angles, magkatabing angles, that add up to 90 degrees. No? So, that's your complementary. Supplementary mo naman, they would add up to 180 degrees. Now, since we are looking for 90 degrees or complementary angles, dapat yung sum nila is 90 degrees. So, 67 plus 23, of course, that would give you 90 22 at 78 dito sa letter A mo, that's 100, no? So, X. 56 plus 24, that's 80. So, hindi din. 140 plus 40, that's 180, no? So, yung letter D mo is supplementary angles. That would add up to 180. But, but for your complementary angles, letter B, ang compact na choice. We go to number 12. Meteorology can predict which of the following natural phenomena. Letter A, volcanic eruptions. Letter B, solar flames or flares. Letter C, typhoons. Or letter D, earthquakes. Ayon, sama, tama yung sabi ni Ma'am Ana, Espino, Rikerman. Tandaan nyo yung sagot mismo, wag po yung letter. Okay, kasi random po yung letters at random po yung ating items. Okay, what's your choice for... Question number 12. Number 12, ICCs. Okay, and letter C po ang ating hinahanap dito. No? So, meteorology is the study of the conditions of the atmosphere. No? So, weather conditions. And so, letter C, typhoons po yung ating hinahanap. Meteorology can predict typhoons. Okay. Uh, one common question in the left then is, what do meteorologists study? Okay, ano yung pinag-aaralan pinag, uh, ng meteorologists? And your answer, of course, would be typhoons. Okay, or po pwede din naman nilang baliin, o po pwede nilang baliin yung question. Um, if you have a scientist who studies typhoons, what would you call him? And so your answer would be meteorologist. 
Okay? So, yung si, si Kael ni Baron dati, si Kuya Kim Atienza, sila po ay meteorologist. No? Although, some of them might not be, si Kuya Kim, Kuya Kim siguro hindi talaga meteorologist, tagabalita lamang siya. Pero those people who are working sa pag-asa especially, are um, your scientists who are called meteorologists. Okay, so letter C for number 12. We go to number 13 because these rocks are formed from molten or partly molten magma. They will most likely be found around Mount Pinatubo and Mayon Volcano. Letter A, metamorphic. Letter B, organic. Letter C, sedimentary. Or letter D, igneous. Okay, yun si Facebook user, no? Solar flare, yung answer kasi meteor. So, so akala mo meteor, bulalakaw, no? Pero meteorology po is a study of weather. Study of weather patterns, so typhoons would be included there. <laughs> Sir Michael Angelo Castro, hindi makamove on si Sir Mamek. Naiisip ko pa rin si na Ed at Lori, di ko talaga magets. Okay, maya po, balikan mo, sir. Pwede pong balikan yung ating video. Pwede din pong i-download yung ating PDF later. Okay, 13, because these rocks are formed from molten or partly molten magma, they will most likely be found around Pinatubo and Mount Mayon. The correct choice, of course, is letter D, igneous rocks. Huh? Remember, you have three different types of rocks. Your igneous rocks are those that are formed from molten rock, now from your magma and from your lava. Remember the difference between your magma and your lava? The magma is still under the surface of the earth. Once it is exposed outside, you'd already call this lava. No? So lava na siya. Sedimentary rocks are formed from the compaction of uh, various sediments. Hence, the term sedimentary, under heat and pressure din siya. Your sedimentary rocks are called sandwich rocks. Okay, so sandwich rocks siya. Pag meron kayong nakitang bato na may different layers, meron kayong nakikitang different layers, that's a sedimentary rocks, no? Or that's a sedimentary rock. Yung common question in the let is, uh, what forms or what types of rocks can you see in the mountains? And your answer will be sedimentary rock, hindi po igneous rock. No? Although your volcano is a type of a mountain, yung mountain kasi is formed by layering, compaction and layering of the different um, sediments. And so sedimentary rock po yung inyong magiging sagot. Another common question is where or in which type of rock can you find fossils? Yung mga um, um, remains ng ating dead plants and animals, your answer would also be sedimentary rocks because these are the types of rocks that are formed by the different layers of the sediments. Metamorphic rocks naman, meta means different and morphic means form. This was usually or this was originally an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock that has changed because of heat and pressure. Okay, so nag change siya because of heat and pressure. And um, originally sedimentary siya or igneous, but because of heat and pressure and nag-change siya, you'd call this metamorphic, okay? Metamorphic rocks. All right? So our answer was igneous rocks. Letter D. We go to number 14. The sum of two numbers is 52, while their difference is 14. Find the smaller number. This is a very easy dahil binigyan kayo ng numbers, no? And very obvious naman kung ano yung yung uh, ano, ano yung yung ano yung inyong magiging tamang choice, no? Parang bonus na siya. Medyo ma ma mahirap nung pinasa nyo yung, yung question, pero pagdating sa choices, meron na siyang hint. Okay? So, napakadali. Okay, what's your choice for question 14? Very obvious. All right, and of course, your correct choice here would be letter C, no? Yan na, yung letter C lang naman, yung 14, yung difference. Okay, so of course, oh, manguhu, ma makikita mo na no, yung kung ano yung inyong magiging choice. Not 22, not 18, not 10. Letter C, ang tumpak na choice, nakalagay na siya. No? Sabi ni Sir Aldrin, number 14 is C. 
Number number 15, Rosa, using a super mower, can mow a lawn in 20 minutes. Her brother, Fidel, using a hand mower, can mow the same lawn in 30 minutes. If they work together, how long will it take them to complete the job? Letter A, 12 minutes. Letter B, 25 minutes. Letter C, 21 minutes. Or letter D, 52 minutes. What's your choice for number 15? Oh, ayan, Sir Gerald, kaliboso, tama po, no? Ginawa niyo pang komplika komplikado, nag-overthink nag kayo sa number 14. Okay, what's your choice? Question number 14, I see bees. Bees, ace, bees and ace. Okay, now this right here is a working together problem. Let's take a look at your computation. Okay, so your, your formula here would be 1 over A plus 1 over B equals 1 T, where A is the time for the first person, so 20 minutes, that's for Rosa, and B is the time for the second per uh, second person, it's 30 minutes for Fidel. And T is the total time that it will take them to work together, okay? So we substitute A and B by the times, uh, the different time that we are given here in our problem. That would be 1 over 20, that's for Rosa, and 1 over 30, that's for Fidel. Now, so 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30 equals 1 over T. Now, as you can see, these are dissimilar fractions, hindi po ka magkapareha sa kanilang denominator. And we can use your butterfly method. That's so butterfly method yung ating gagamitin. We multiply 1 by 30, and we also multiply 20 by 1. No? So you have 1 times 30, giving you 30. 1 times 20, giving you 20. No? So addition yung ating uh, process. Then, of course, you multiply the denominator. 20 plus 30, or times 30 would give you 600. Okay, so again, sa natin kinuha yung 30 and 20. 30 is from 1 times 30 plus 20 is from 1 times 20. 600 naman is from 20 times 30. Okay, so 20 times 30 is 600 equals 1 over t. Now, we can continue by um, combining no, your 30 plus 20. That would give you 50 over 600. Now, we cross multiply. So 50 times t, that would give you 50t. 1 times 600 would give you 600. And so to get the value of t, we divide both sides by 50. t equals 600 divided by 50 or 12. And so the correct choice is letter A, 12 minutes. Okay, letter A, 12 minutes for number 15. Okay, we go to number 16. Carmela drives 20 miles from her home to the store at a speed of 30 miles per hour. If she makes a return trip home at a speed of 40 miles per hour, what is the total amount of time she spent driving? Letter A, 35 minutes. Letter B, 1 hour and 10 minutes. Letter C, 50 minutes. Or letter D, 1 hour and 30 minutes. What is our choice? Number 16. Mm -hmm. Ano po yung ating choice for question number 16? Okay, I see these and these. Okay, yung iba siguro nag, nagsasagot ng D, no? sabi ng, ng isang kaklasa nyo, yang B ay D kanina. So, yung iba sa inyo, isumasagot ng D. Now, again, remember, iba na po yung order ng ating items. Iba din yung order ng ating choices. No? So, baka eh, iniisip yung letter D pa rin siya, pero B na pala siya ngayon. Okay, so tama yung sinabi kanina ng isa niyong kaklase, ng isa niyong kaguro, na um, tandaan yung uh, answer mismo, hindi yung letter. 
Okay, so sabi dito, si Carmela nag-drive ng 20 miles, 20 miles from her home to the store at a speed of 30 miles per hour. And then she returns at a speed of 40 miles per hour. What is the total amount of time that she spent? So kukunin natin yung time papunta sa store at yung time pabalik sa kanilang house. So the total amount of time. Okay, so here, this of course is a problem on on speed. No, Now here, for you to, to solve for distance, that would be speed times time. For you to uh, solve for time, that would be distance divided by speed. For speed naman, of course, that would be distance divided by time. Tandaan nyo lamang po yung pyramid na to. If you are looking for the distance, you simply cover distance and you can see that distance is speed times time. If you are looking for time, in this case, you simply cover T. And nakikita mo that it's D over S, no? So, time is distance divided by speed. And so, distance divided by speed po yung ating gagamitin formula dito because we are looking for time. Okay? So, time here would be the, dist uh, the, the distance is 20 miles. So, 20 miles siya papunta at pabalik. Okay? So, the same lamang yung numerators mo. Divided by 30, ito yung unang speed, no? Speed niya papunta ng store. Now, the next speed yung pabalik na siya ng house, was 40 miles per hour. So, ito yung ginamit natin dito sa next fraction natin. Okay, now, as you can see again, this similar fraction, and so we use the butterfly method. Okay? Or, uh, po, pwede nyo din naman i-cancel muna. Cancel nyo muna tong zeros. Okay? So, cancel muna yung zeros. And so, you are left with 2 divided by 3 plus 2 divided by 4. Then, perform your butterfly method. No? So, 2 times 4, that would give you Ah, okay, sorry. Ito pala ay minultiply ko muna sa 60 minutes because we are given minutes, hours, and minutes sa ating uh, choices. Okay, so I got the um, two-thirds. I got two-thirds of 60 plus one-half of 60. That's for the other one, no? the other fraction. So una-una, two-thirds of 60 plus your two over four can be simplified as one-half. No? So one-half than 60. Now, two-thirds of 60, of course, that would give you uh, 40 minutes. Okay, so 40 minutes ito. That's, this would be 20. 20 na lang yung natira dito. No? So 3 divided by 3, the GCF of 3 and 60 is 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 60 divided by 3 is 20. No? So 2 times 20, that would give you 40 minutes. Now for this one here, 2 and 60, their GCF is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. You are left with 1 times 30, giving you 30 minutes. So 40 minutes plus 30 minutes, we only have 60 minutes in an hour. 40 minutes plus 30 minutes is 70 minutes. Hence, your answer would be 1 hour and 10 minutes. Okay, so 1 hour, 10 minutes po yung ating hinahanap. And so your choice should be letter B. Okay, letter B for number 16. Ayan, sabi ni Ma'am Rose Ann Panao, itong si Carmela nag road trip lang, pinapahirapan pa ako. Okay, so letter B for number 16. Again, balikan po lahat ito later, no, kung medyo uh, questionable pa, hindi nyo pa masyadong naintindihan kung pwede nyo pong balikan. And of course, so pwede pong i-download yung ating PDF file. All right. Now we go to number 17. What is the greatest common divisor of 24 and 40? Okay, letter A, 3, letter B, 2, letter C, 5, or letter D, 4. Ito, easy na. Okay, now remember, we are looking for the greatest. At sabi natin yung inyong... Uh, magiging technique dito, uunahin nyo muna yung greatest out of all the choices. no? So what you do is you divide the numbers here, 24 and 40, by 5. Okay, so divide nyo by 5. Dapat walang remainder. no? So 24 divided by 5 cannot be. That would be equal to 4, then there is a remainder of, of 4. No? So hindi po pwede yung 5 mo. Now you go next to the second big number. No? So 4 in this case here, 24 divided by 4, that would be 6, walang remainder. And 40 divided by 4, that would be 10, walang remainder. And so the tumpak na choice is letter D. So again, kapag ka greatest common divisor, unahin mo nang i-check yung greatest number. Kapag ka least common multiple, unahin i-check yung pinakamaliit na number. Okay? So letter D4 for number 17. Number 18, Paolo 
is terribly on edge. What does on edge mean? Letter A, shrewd. Letter B, unprepared. Letter C, eager. Or letter D, nervous. What's your choice for 18? Okay, number 18, on edge, of course. Yung ibig sabihin po ng on edge is letter D, nervous. Now, if you are on edge, that means nasa uh, gilid ka na ng inyong upuan. No? Ikaw ay ninenervyos. On edge means being nervous. So, letter D po yung ating hinahanap. Okay, this is a very common question in the let. So, dapat alam nyo na po yung inyong choice dito. Paolo is terribly on edge. On edge means nervous. Okay, not shrewd. Shrewd is... Uh, wais, no? So, wais, madetalye, mahilig mag, mag uh, pick ng nitigriti, no? Yan yung shrewd. Unprepared, of course, you know the meaning of this, hindi ka preparado. Eager naman ay ganadong ganado. But the meaning of on edge is nervous. So, letter D is uh, tatumpak na choice for number 18. Yan, sabi ni Ma'am Christine, no? I'm terribly on edge every MWF. Okay, we go to number 19. What figure of speech is used in this line? 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor today. We've had several or similar choices before, sim similar questions before. Letter A, synecdoche. Letter B, metonymy. Letter C, metaphor. Or letter D, simile. Okay, 19, I see A's. Number 19, I see a lot of letter A's. Okay, number 19, I see a lot of letter A's. And of course, letter A ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, si Nek Doke, yung ating hinahanap. Remember our mnemonic, no? Yung ating, yung ating hint, my sin, which is si Nek Doke, is part of me. So your si Nek Doke, um, um, the, the part represents the whole or vice versa. While your your mother is related to you, no metonymy naman is using a related word. In this case, sales po yung ginamit, and you know that sales ay parte na ng inyong boats, no? So 20 sales here, sales here would represent your boats, and sales, of course, are part of your boat. And so sinek de kayo yung ating hinahanap, not metonymy, no? Hindi related word lamang. Metaphor and simile, of course, you know them to be very, very similar, Simile does uh, simile uses the terms like and as, while metaphor does not. Okay, pero in this this item nineteen letter A po yung ating nahanap. We go to the last item tonight, which ed edn sound is different. I am not going to read them because magkakahint kayo, of course, no, if I read them. But what's your choice for number twenty? Okay, what is your choice? Number 20. All right, I see these. Okay, we are looking for the ED sound that is different. Greeted, committed, granted, and joked. Okay, and of course, ang tumpak na choice natin dito is letter D, joked. Okay, so patina yung kanyang sound, no? hindi siya ED. Uh, may, may tanong, no? ano po yung sinekdoke in Filipino? 
if we hindi nyo pa po na nakikita na meron po tayong video on figures of speech, yung iba-ibang figures of speech na akin pong diniscuss, so oxymoron, yung inyong synecdoche, metonymy, simile, metaphor, uh, alliteration, lahat po yan, consonants, no, diniscuss po sa isang video natin sa YouTube channel, balikan nyo po yan, no, lahat po ng ating videos, Prof. Ed, Gen. Ed, and of course, we have our playlist for our live stream. Meron po tayong video on the different figures of speech na may examples at my Filipino translation no sa panoorin niyo po yan but to answer the question of Facebook users sinekdo ki po in Tagalog is pagpapalit sa klaw okay pagpapalit sa pagpapalit sa klaw siya metonymy is pagpapalit tawag okay so again panoorin niyo po yung video natin on this okay para po mas maliwanag kasi uh, kompleto po yung ating different types of figures of speech doon of course meron po tayong uh, examples. Okay, so number 20, letter D, joke po yung ating hinahanap. Okay, and that ends the nice discussion. But of course, we will be back on Friday, no? Ang bilis ng oras. Uh, wag, kaya wag po kayong um, tumigil sa pagre-review. Malapit na malapit na po yung inyong test, no? Ang bilis po ng oras. Friday na ulit. Parang kailan na ako nagsabi na happy Friday, happy weekend. Uh, next natin live stream ay, ay Viernes ulit. Okay? So, again, continue studying and of course, do not stop dreaming and do not stop uh, striving hard to reach your dreams of becoming licensed professional teachers. Kayang-kaya po yan. No? Babalikan natin lahat ng ating mga items on Friday. Prof. Ed po tayo sa Friday. Then of course, the following Friday, meron na po tayong pre-board. Then after that, we'll have our final coaching. Okay? But tonight, we say goodbye. This has been Coach Mac of Gurung Pinoy. And of course, I leave you the same. Sabay-sabay po tayo. Malit man na buti ng mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat and good night, mga kaguro. Bye!